So this process is not just giving back the power of APO to the, to the stakeholders, but is involving them. But tonight, the topic actually when Stefan approached me was um, what you wanted to know when you started as a, as a product manager. And I started as an pro intern in, in, uh, in uh, product management. So the first things that I, talk, that I thought about was communication. And because it's extremely tricky to, to get it right, especially in a company that then is growing extremely big. So I think if we start from the job of product manager, that is to discover a product that is valuable, usable, and feasible. I think it's, I didn't know that the slides before <laughs> were so close, but actually makes so, so much sense. Because we need to, we need to make sure that we, um, that we solve a customer problem in a feasible way from a tech perspective, that we have the right fit with the business. So here also, um, I'm not talking about only startup and when you're starting a project from, from zero, but also when you have already uh, a company that is working, this part here is also extremely, extremely important. So, uh, okay. So essentially what is critical, critical to do in order to find, to find the, right, the right spot is important to, uh, to communicate with all, the, all those dis different parts uh, of the of the business, so you need to you need to make sure that you that you talk with your, your uh, with your users, of course, potential happy and unhappy. That you talk with the, the developers, not only the developers of your team, but if you are working in a big team, then you need to talk with all the, the, uh, with, the with the different teams that you have in the company, and as well as with the internal business. So here, um, the, the important part is that here communication is not only one way is both ways. You need to understand their problem. You need to understand them. You need to, you need to make sure that you, uh, that you grab what their problem are. And that's why, as the job of a product manager, we need to build the right occasion to have conversation with them. Uh, I, I like to think about those, those three components as, the, as my three girlfriends, because at the end of the day, if you think about that, if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you cannot just talk with them just once per month or just send an occasionally text, right? So you need to be close with them. Uh, what, I'm, uh, what is interesting about also the, 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 experience, the experiences that we had is that we started with a super small office. We were uh, probably, there were five to ten developers. We were all in one floor. We were 50 people in total. Three years ago, we um, here in Munich, and we we didn't have any processes. We didn't have anything. And now, how the picture after three years, how the picture look like, is this, <laughs> if this would work. Um, so as I was telling as I was telling you, we started we started when we were extremely extremely small. And managing those three components where, we, where you are, when you are small is easy because you sit uh, in the same room, you, you talk with people. Now the picture, the picture that looks like our company is this one. We are active in 23 markets with more than 90 uh, million visits in 2016 and 10 active brands. And also from an internal perspective, we manage 50 platforms and we have eight offices around the, around the world. So imagine also from a stakeholder perspective, you need to have all those teams aligned, all those stakeholders aligned. And in terms of IT and product, we have more than 50 people. So we grew from five to 50 in three years, even more actually, now we are around 75, and we have uh, more than 10 departments. So, you know, here the, um, the challenges are, are great, especially when you're scaling so fast. And nevertheless, we manage now to every week to deploy new features on every, on every single platform. So what I want to show you tonight are all the challenges that we faced to reach this, uh, to reach this point, really from zero to 100. And I want to show you also how we set up the processes and what, what is working, what is not, and when. So first of all, who we are. Global Service Groups operate two savings platform. Uh, with two different, uh, two different product lines. So we operate 
on uh, uh, coupons. So we aggregate coupons around the, uh, around the web. And we uh, curate collection of deals in different segments, like travel or electronics. We started in 2012 uh, with a brand of Couponation. And here, we were extremely small. And then after 2015, we grew a lot. And that was actually the, the growth period where we introduced 10 more brands. In terms of history of product management, uh, we started, um, in a, in a, I think in, a, in most of the company you see this, uh, this setup where, where you are on those three components that we were talking about. We were just an interface for tech. So the product management was uh, essentially the optional phase, because sometimes also we had people working to the developers and just telling what to do. And, and we, were, we were working without being close to the customers. We were not talking with them. We didn't have time. We didn't know that was important. Imagine that at, the moment, at, at that moment, we had uh, requirements coming on the spreadsheet. So we had this spreadsheet with 300 requirements requirements. So when we were building the roadmap, we were estimating, we were asking the CTO to estimate every single, every single row. So we were like taking a couple of days just to do that. Uh, and we had only five developers. Of course, we were just doing the first two or three features on the list. Um, here then we started studying. We started we start, uh, understanding also how product management was working. I had no idea what, what was. So, the first thing that you, that you see when you, start, when, you, uh, when you read stuff online, the first thing uh, that you read is how to say no. And we felt in love with that. It was, we, we felt empowered. Oh, OK, we can actually say no. That's good. And of course, then we started to, uh, to implement also more lean methodology, go out of the building, talking with the users, and so on. What uh, happened here is that we went close to the, to the tech and to the users, but we went far from the, from the business. We were neglecting the business. And in a small organization that, of course, you know, as also Stefan was saying, is important to, to solve a user problem. But in a big organization, you also need to, to take care of this part, because it's actually what, is make, what makes money and what pays our salary. And, and that also caused problems. The biggest, problems, the biggest problem that we had was when we acquired a huge company here with um, incredible experience. So we were, at this time we were three years old and we acquired this company that was 10 years old. So they were in the market, they, they were expert on what they were doing. And from them, from them we, know, uh, we got to know, understand also the problems they, that they faced, how they solved all the problems, and they really helped us to focus on the right topics. That's, um, that was interesting, but since we, we got so strong from a business perspective, having this set up here was tough. Because this means actually they knew what to do, but we were not ready to, uh, to, to, to understand them. So um, we tried different setups. We tried different, uh, different ways. We tried different processes. But nothing was actually, was actually working. We, we, were, we had fires everywhere, as you can imagine. Um, so the things that changed was um, was when we uh, when we stumbled upon this Inspire book. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. Marty Kagan, Inspired. No, cool. So if you have problems scaling up your uh, your business in product management, that's the kind of book that you need to read. That really helped us because that's the the book that I was referring to when when I was giving you this picture, because it really helps you to, to, define, to define this structure. So we set up a process that, that really made us bring the business together also with the, with the users and tech. And, and now also these three parts of the, uh, these three girlfriend of mine, they are not jealous anymore to each other. So how we did it? This is our communication stack. So if you think about the three components, tech, users, and stakeholders, tech, we use Scrum and Scrum on Scrums. We have more than seven or eight teams, so it's huge. And we use uh, Spotify methodology, of course. Everyone has his own adaptation. Uh, for, for the users, of course, we are 
Uh, we always go and talk with the users. We, uh, in, every, in every single stage, uh, recently also we started with the Google Design Sprint when we, when we want to introduce something particularly uh, interesting that, that actually is worth uh, testing a lot. And, and for the stakeholders, actually, we have uh, inspired of uh, this, this setup is um, based on this book. And freestyle and axe is always important. This is how uh, this is how the process uh, looks like. This is just a slide that I stole. Uh, so we have two phases. We have the phase one, that is the strategy phase, where we define what to invest on, and we have the next three phases, phase two, three, and four, where we go operationally on building the product. So the phase one is when we meet everyone, everyone, uh, every important person in the company and we define the priorities of the team. The results here is a prioritized roadmap that then here is taken and developed. The important part here is that the stakeholders are part of this process and users as well and tech as well. So every single component is present in every single phase of the product development and that's also the most important thing. How we do that, going to detail, is really this. So the first one, what to build? We have a product council. Product council is straightforward. We have the CXO, and we have the head of product, depending on then on the, on the topics. And we have experts on the field or the product owner for the particular product. And the results is a problem-based roadmap. So here we are talking about the problems that we want to solve. Here, you guys now are starting also the, um, uh, the discovery of the problem space and everything else. And here, we, are, we, we bring this as an input to this, to this phase here. So we bring the, all the problems that we find and all the input from those, all the stakeholders. The nice thing is that in this product council, everyone is allowed to pitch an idea. Every department is allowed to pitch an idea. Every stakeholder has one point, and the result is just by voting, you define what to build next. And based on that, you have your roadmap, and then you uh, hand, hand it out to your Scrum Council. So the Scrum Council is our way to include the stakeholders also in the operational Scrum team. So you have actually the Scrum team, so PO, developers, tech lead, QA, plus the main stakeholders. And here, you, first of all, you define your solution. So here you're not talking about features, you're talking about problems, here you're talking about possible solutions that you test with the users, you see what works, what it doesn't, and then you plan for the launch. This step here, phase three, is extremely important when you scale it up in different countries. When you have eight offices around the world and you are developing one feature for uh, the editors, so we have 300 employees, 350 employees, you need to make sure that all those employees knows where to click on the admin panel what to do. They are trained. They have capacity to do that. And that's, that's, uh, that's where it happens. And then you have the phase four that is iterating and refining the product. So this means uh, here, the Scrum Council, after a little bit the, 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 the product or the feature is, uh, is shipped, then they meet together and they, and they check if this product is actually solving the problem, is working, is meeting the objectives, and if we need iteration or not. So that's, that's the, in very short, that's the, that's the different phases that we have. Uh, in this case, the PO doesn't need to say no anymore because it's not the PO that is prioritizing. It's not the PO, it's, it's the PO, of course, is leading everything, but it's, it's not the PO that says no to, to, to something in particular because it's the entire organization that has the buy-in to do what, what you are actually planning on the roadmap. And the interesting thing is that by involving all the stakeholders and all the business in all these different steps, then they are not coming with stupid requirements. They, they actually know what is going on. They know, they know what is planned, so it's going extremely bad. Of course, it's difficult to implement. And it took a, also a lot of time for us to, to, to implement it. Uh, what, um, what we learned by implementing this, uh, this process was that actually first thing is that 
in every product that Scrum, Scrum Council, you need to have decision-empowered people. So the first time that we tried, we had, uh, no one had time for meetings, of course, and then they tried to delegate to, to some other people, so they send someone, uh, the stakeholders send someone in the team, and, but they, of course they cannot take decisions, so after the team they need to go back to the boss, ask for the permission, then go back to the team, and this one is just killing the, 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 the process. So if, if you want to have this kind of process, if you want to have this involvement, you need to have a commitment from the entire organization. You need to have people that can actually take a, a decision inside of every meeting. And of course, then those meetings, is gonna, they are going to be huge. They're going to be with lots of people, 10 departments, offices, and so on. So the big meetings need to be organized extremely well. You need to have agenda. That's always, you know? And especially when you are meeting, when you are gathering lots of people, you need to have extremely good agenda, you need to have extremely good, uh, good idea of what you, what you need to present. And, and those big meetings are not good for talking about content. They, you cannot talk about the single feature or the single specification or the single design. You need to talk about prioritization, where we want to invest, where we want to, where it makes, what it makes sense to do next. So how do you do that? Pre-alignment takes a lot of time, I know. But if you, that's also a rule that applies uh, every time. If you, want to, um, if you want to have a good meeting and if you want to have the buy-in in the meeting, then, they need to, then all the stakeholders and everyone in, involved in the meeting, they need to know what they are talking about. They don't need to have surprises. So you need to have the right conversation. You need to talk with them. You need to pitch their ideas. You need to gather their feedback. You need to maybe change the idea to make them fit also to the, to the business to the, to, or to other different requirements. So that's, uh, that's some of the lessons learned. And I will be happy to, to answer the questions if you, if you have more later on. And problems, of course, all these alignments and all these meetings kill time. So at the moment, what we are doing is that every three, uh, three months, we are, we are running with the product council, and then we run just with the Scrum council. So this is, uh, this is helping us reducing a little bit this problem, but however, this problem exists. We can coexist now because we need to have all those people aligned, but still involving so many people kill the agility. When you scale, when you scale a startup to 350 people, then you need to sacrifice on the on the agility at some point, so that's why it's important. You know that this um, these kind of processes are great if you have a product that is mature, that is uh, that is working well, and and you are and you are improving and you are and and you actually need to grow that you need to grow this product. For new products, it doesn't work so well. You need to write to find the right balance with the stakeholders. So this process is not just giving back the power of a PO to the, to the stakeholders, but is involving them. And that's why it's super important to manage the boundaries. And, and at the end of the day, the product owner is the ultimate responsible for the, for the, pro for the product. So that's also a challenge to, be, to consider. And the other thing is the agility to the company. If you have a team of tech and uh, product, that is working in an agile way, and you work in a company that is not agile, then those words will collide. So you need to bring agile to the company, and this takes time, this takes effort, and this takes commitment from the entire company. So of course, we are going in this direction, but we need to teach all the people what it means to, to work in an agile way. So as we were saying, can you actually launch and manage a new product with this, with this process? I, I showed you that. We introduced 10 new brands, and more will come as well. But how can you manage those kind of innovation, those kind of new, new products in this, in, this, in this environment? You cannot. Easy. So it's low. And uh, the priority for those kind of products is to find the product market fit. You need to find, of course, the problem solution fit, then the product, product market fit. And those kind of processes are good for mature product, but not for for new products. So how do we do that? We take them out. So if we want to launch a new brand, we just separate teams 
we use different brands. You don't want to use the, you don't want to have the legacy of the big brands that you have, and you, and you have a small focus team is working in a lean way, and with re really as little as possible processes. So you just kill every processes that they showed you, but you try to have more involvement in the team. This is the, sure. Uh, the brands you talking about, these 10 brands, they are basically doing the same as Combination is doing? Uh no. We are always, uh, yeah, they are, they are all different. Of course, they are always uh, targeting different, uh, different user journeys and different, uh, different spaces. So uh, from a consumer perspective uh, journey, Couponation, uh, Couponation is targeting the purchase phase because the user, uh, the user is searching for a coupon code. So we acquire traffic through, through SEO. We are exploring also other, um, other phase of the, of the journey it also requires completely different mindset. So that's why it's important really to isolate those, those brands and let them run until we have a validation of a product that actually works. Otherwise, you pivot or you kill it and you move ahead. Yeah, but I mean, can you give an example of one of the products which is not tradition? What are the seven bottom uh, per, per instance, the one, the, what, I, what I told you about, the uh, collection of, curation, of curated deals, that's something that is completely different. So it's taking the idea of giving the, user, giving the user the possibility of saving money, but it's focusing on, the, on inspiring the user by providing them good deals. This is extremely tough business. We can go in detail. But. So that's the overall picture of the, um, the, processes, the processes that we have. And as you can see here, the, the, biggest, the biggest difference is really that here is incredibly huge processes. 350 people needs to be all aligned and all work in the same direction and not opposite. Here, few people testing out, see what it works. Yes. Uh, uh, when do you consider a, a product mature or stable? So when do you switch from uh, um, the tech and the user uh, methodology that you use for new products to the one that you use for mature and stable products? Um, when, when, you, when you reach the product market fit. So it's of, of course difficult to say when you have the right product market fit, but you, you have the right indication. So um, for instance, what we, what, we, what we have now is one product that is uh, running on, uh, with a run rate of uh, more than 200k per year. So in terms of monetization, so you, you know that it's getting a product that is interesting to be, to be launched uh, on a global scale. So it's kind of a mix of traction and uh, revenue and... You have the right traction and you can monetize it properly. No, that's that you find, you know, like you, when you solve the biggest problem. And then it's really a matter of scaling it up, you know? And that's when you also need more people and then you need more processes. So where is when you go more on the, on the stable product? And here the impo most important thing <laughs> in managing the stakeholders, you need, to, you need to know them. You need to sit in the same room. You need to understand. If you don't sit in the same room, then you cannot launch a new, a new product. Otherwise, there are just too many people. So last message. Uh, as, I as I told you before, it's important as a product manager to build the right conversation, the right occasion to have the right conversation, both with customer, tech, and business. And that was it. So thank you very much. We are hiring. So uh, just drop me an email if you want to have more information. Not all the jobs are open there. So um, do you have any questions? is a way to manage a uh, different Scrum team. When you, have, uh, when you have more than one Scrum team and they work with the same, um, it's not on the same code, because of course we always try to have self-deployable and autonomous team, but they, they however depend to each other, you need to have a layer of alignment. So it's essentially a, another layer of Scrum, put it on the top, that are managed 
So it's a scrum where you have all the leads of all the different teams, essentially. So a question about the mission products. So, so I'm curious about what is the method to kind of prioritize things. So OK, everybody, like 100 people, knows about the, the features. Uh, how do you actually do the voting, or how, how do you select the, the first three ones? So that that was the that was the first uh, the first iteration that we had in 2012. Luckily, we are not with the with the spreadsheet with 300 features anymore. So what we have what we do is that we focus on problems, and the product council is uh, voting what is the next thing to where to imp to where to invest money. And here we are talking about big shift or big investment. We are not talking about you know like this aesthetic change aesthetic change, but you are talking about really new new maybe like even new line of business or like new possibilities to monetize or something like this. So at the end of the day you are not gonna you're not talking about three hundred possibilities, but you're gonna talk about ten. But how many people are talking about it? So so is there like ten people to prioritize or you have under it? No no no. You're talking about ten people. You're talking about all the all the main stakeholders, essentially all the CXOs plus experts in the field that of that particular matter. Yeah. Um, at one point, you um, differentiated between stakeholders, users, and uh, tech department. So, could you please, that confused me a little bit, could you please give a definition for you what a stakeholder is in your eyes? Yeah. Um, everyone is a stakeholder in the company, <laughs> first of all. Yeah, makes sense. So, here we are talking about uh, stakeholders are, in, 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 this, uh, in this example, are internal stakeholders. So we are talking about head or uh, other departments in the company. So for instance, in our case, we have editors. So for those editors, we have also a head of editors. And we bring us always uh, topics like efficiency, or uh, uh, usability of the admin panel, or improvement, or everything else, automation. You know, Or then you can have, for instance, in our case, SEO. SEO is extremely strong. Is actually, we have one department of SEO that is uh, super strong because and the mature product is based on SEO. So you have your head of SEO that wants always to try different things and maybe like try different uh, different processes and try different ways to to rank to rank better. So you need to allow them to to also to you need to give them space. You need to understand it because they are paying us the bill. You know. So that's those are those are the kind of those are the kind of stakeholders. So for instance, also key account management, salespeople. You know, like you need those are all stakeholders uh, com, uh, for for us. Uh, because we uh, we talk with advertisers in order to get the best discounts. So we we source the discount directly with the uh, with the advertiser. So you just collect them, sort of. No, no, no. That's that's actually. That's actually the way that we, where we get the, the best and exclusive discount. That's why also we are, then we manage to rank better because we have better, better content and we provide better value to the users. Any other question? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>